Hello everybody and welcome back to CS453. This is the mobile app development course and this is lecture number two. It's a follow-up from, uh, well I guess this would be Thursday's lecture. It's a follow-up from Tuesday's lecture. Tuesday's lecture I introduced the maps to you and uh, we're going to run through the maps and this time I'm going to show you a few um, interesting things to do with it. If you remember the next assignment that you're working on um, which I believe is, let me make sure, I think it's assignment number four, but we'll just check real quick here. Um, has you create a map in an app and put multiple, Google Map app, and put multiple markers in there. So you're gonna create a, a themed app of your choice, just to remind you what you're doing here, just in case you didn't watch the last video. Um, you're gonna provide some features uh, for navigating. Um, well, you don't have to put navigation in there, but you can if you wanted to. Uh, but you're going to put multiple markers in there. Um, so you're going to test the app in the emulator. You can do that. And now I'll demonstrate that again. Um, so you're going to have, uh, you're going to show the user interesting points on the map, create some logic for uh, navigation or map features of some short, so, sort. Show multiple locations on the map, minimum of two on the same map. Well, actually, I'm going to sort of give that away to you right now. In fact, after today's video, I'm practically going to write the app for you, but I'm not giving it a theme. So why don't you come up with your own theme on that one? Um, you do not have to do navigation. You can do something else. Uh, come up with your own theme. Create your own app. You can make a game out of it if you want. Um, you can do anything you want with it. Sky's the limit. So let's see. Um, I'm going to run through how to do the maps one more time, just in case. Uh, we have got some slow starters here, people who have not figured out that we're online. Yes, there are students sending me email messages asking what's going on and when's the class going to be online and blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, the class is already online. Um, it means you haven't been receiving my emails if you've been sending me those emails. Um, so yeah, we're online now. And uh, this is lecture number two of the online series. So anyway, uh, let's go back to the examples folder. And in the examples folder, I put something in for us today. I put in markers on map.txt, so I don't have to type. Uh, so we'll be using this one here. Uh, so I'm just going to go in and start a new Android project and take it from there. So if you missed the first one, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna, I have to repeat the steps anyway because I need to make a new app. But I do wanna show you something about the emulator as well. Um, so let's see, start a new Android Studio project. We've done this before. Uh, we've done this part before as well in the first video. Uh, you wanna scroll down to where it says Google Map Activity. That's the one I wanna do right there. And press on next. And now I'm going to call this one multiple markers, multiple markers. There we go. And click on finish. It doesn't matter how many API keys that you generate. Um, and if it's easier, just generate a new API key. But because I've used this emulator in the last example that I gave you uh, for Tuesday, uh, the emulator, I, it's best to actually refresh it, and I hope I remember to do that. And in fact, I'm going to load up, I'm going to refresh the emulator right now just to demonstrate to you that it needs to be done. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. We might run into a problem where the map doesn't load. Um, so if your emulator is not loading your map successfully, then you want to you wanna refresh it. So if I go into Tools, oops, uh, let's wait for this thing to run so I can... Actually, I have to wait for the index to finish so I can actually go into the AVD manager. Uh, I guess I could pause the video, but well, let's just see what happens here. And it seems like the video recording goes a little bit faster than the in-class lectures. Um, you know, of course now my internet's probably not running as fast as it should be running. Uh, but let's see, it's indexing. Uh, the Google Maps um, template does use the internet, uh, so another problem that you might be having if you don't have good internet access, the map will take longer to load, uh, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, but let me show you something. Oh, here we go. We're almost there. All right, now we're at a point where I can go into Tools and I'm going to see AVD Manager at the top of the screen there. And I know I've got my AVD manager. I've got my AVD set up correctly because it says Play Store. 
and in the Play Store, I have this Google, this Google Maps or Google Play Store. And you see the size of it says 8.8 .8 gigs, which means I haven't cleaned it out in a while. And so if I click on the little pencil, you can sort of see the details going on here. You do want to pick a, you do want to pick a um, image that does support the Google Play. Um, that may also be another problem if you don't have the Google Play in there. Uh, but um, you want the Play Store, you want this symbol to be emulated. Um, and I showed that to you last time. And if you go into the SDK Manager and you go into, uh, click on Show Package Details, and you come down here, you want to make sure you've got this guy. This is the Google Play Intel. One, one of these Google Plays needs to be selected so it shows up in the AVD Manager as something that you can select when you create the emulator. So if you, uh, you know, click on create new virtual device <clears throat> and we've got the devices in here that support. So, you know, I can do another one here actually. Create the Pixel 3, click on next and it should tell me I've got Q installed and it found, it found a, uh, uh, an image that's compatible of the other images. These are the other ones that are not quite compatible. I would use the recommended one. If you click on finish or you can change the name if you want or just click on finish and voila we've got another emulator. And you notice that the emulator here is only taking up 513 megabytes. This one here is taking up a lot. Uh, so let's fix that. Um, it, it's taking up a lot of uh, memory because I've got it, I've been running it and running it and running it and running it and every time I run it, it installs a new app on there and it leaves garbage behind. And the Google Maps downloads a lot of garbage. Um, so if you click on this little downward arrow thing and you say wipe data. And if I wipe the data, look it goes down from 8 gigs to 1.2 gigs. So that's a much better selection. And then let's say you don't want the emulator in here. Like I'm going to delete that one I just created. I just click on delete. So anyway, um, just a few things you can do with the emulator. You do want to clean out the emulator occasionally because uh, if you don't wipe the data on it, it just takes up a, you know, eight gigs instead of one gig. Uh, not only that, but the mapping stuff, especially if you use a different API key, won't reset itself correctly. Okay. So I'm going to click on, uh, so the window that comes up is the Google Maps API. I need to set the API. I mean, you're going to need to go get the API from the last, or I just create a new one. I'm just going to create a new one. So I'm going to click on this little link here and I'm going to come out to the Google API console. I'm logged into one of my Gmail accounts. Uh, I noticed it up here. I'm actually in my Gmail bhacker2, which is okay. I already have that one that I created last time uh, in the last video, but I'm going to create another one. So create a project. I'm going to press continue. And so for those of you who did not watch the last video, this is what I did in the last video. You notice up over here, we get this little round circle. You do need internet access, by the way. So now it says two, because I'm creating another key. Enabling API, create the API key. It's creating the API key for me. I believe you can have up to 100 API keys, uh, but don't quote me on that. This is the API key for today, uh, March 18th. You only have to do it once per app that you're creating, but I would use a different API key in each one of the apps. Click on this little guy over here and it copies it. API key is copied to the clipboard. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go down to the last line over here and we're gonna paste it right here. And voila, we're going to have a working app uh, that is going to t send us to Sydney, Australia. Uh, so let's see, paste. There we go. We've got the key in there. And if I run the app now, um, it's going to start from scratch. There it is here. I wiped out the data, which means that the emulator is going to have to restart from the beginning. Uh, then I'm going to talk through this while it's going on. Um, and change the code while it's going on. Um, so I'm gonna let this run in the background here. And now we just wanna see Sydney, Australia show up, but I wanna wait here actually before I, I do anything. I could pause the video. If it takes any longer, I will pause the video. Um, actually, I'm gonna pause the video. So as you can see, the emulator is still 
still loading up there. I thought I'd unpause it for a second just to show you that uh, the emulator is still starting. It's waiting for the target device to become available. And when it does, it's going to show me, uh, it's going to show me the Australia thing. So the sample code, and I'm going to kind of minimize this while it's still loading. Um, we're going to change the sample code because we're going to do multiple markers. But this code right now creates a map. And the only thing it does is on the map ready, once the map gets ready, it's going to put a marker in Sydney, Australia. And it's going to set the set the camera to the marker that is in Sydney, Australia. Now this is kind of a generic marker and uh, it's a pin that's going to show up um, on the map momentarily. Uh, let's see how far we're getting here. Well, we're not getting too far so I'm going to pause the video one more time. Uh, let this go a little bit further because you guys don't have to sit here and watch it go. So let's see, pause again. Okay, we're back, and I probably noticed the fan has started on my computer here, probably because of the recording software along with the emulator. It's not a happy camper. It does run a little bit slower, so I'm glad I paused the video. But now we have the little marker on the map, and it is showing uh, Sydney, Australia. Great. Okay, so if we uh, stop this for a second here, uh, I'm going to stop all of them. Looks like I had the app running twice as well. Uh, well, not such a good thing. Uh, so maybe my fan will start slowing down. Um, I'm now going to go over to the website and pull out the example code for today. And this is in the file. The file is called Markers on Maps. And I'm just going to take from the includes and copy and paste it. Stick it in the yeah. Stick it in the app. If I can figure out how to do it. There we go. All right. Let's take it from the bottom then. Go to the top. There we go. I'm not going to take the comment there. Uh, copy. And I'm going to move it on over to this one here. Um, and I'm just going to replace what's in it. And I'm in the maps activity. Noticing that in the maps activity, we have the on create menu that uh, uses the fragment, the map fragment, and then there is an on map ready method and the on map, map ready method is pretty minimal. So this code is, uh, I don't have to actually do the whole thing. I'm really the only thing that's going to change is on the map ready. Uh, but let's see. So I'm pasting uh, the code example in here. Let's go back. Um, this is the same as the uh, as the example. So we have the support. So actually the only thing that changed, in fact, if you want to, you can just take the on map ready method. This is the only thing that changed. So instead of the one marker that we have in Sydney, Australia, we're adding multiple markers. So let me explain a few things about this example. So in the top here, I've got three different um, terrains actually to, to tell you about. Um, if you type in Google map, Google map dot, you'll see the terrains that will show up. So hybrid, uh, normal, none, terrains. And we have all the methods that are associated on click listeners and stuff and um, on points and all the different methods you might want to play around with uh, for your particular um, app that you're creating. And you can comment out, just have one of these commented one of these working at a time, comment out the ones you're not working. I'm going to show you the map type that's hybrid, which I put some comments on the right hand side over here that tells you what it is. So the terrain maps with mountains and rivers. This is the photographic map with roads and cities. And we have the photographic map, just the satellite map, which I believe is the default. Um, actually, none is probably the default. And so I've put three markers on the map. So this on map ready is taking a Google map, which is a, just called Google map. In the other example, I think it was called G map. Um, so don't worry about that. It's taking as a parameter automatically when the map is ready. Oh good, my fan's going down, that's good. Uh, it's taking as a parameter to Google map. So Google map dot set map type is Google map dot map type hybrid, map type satellite. So pick a map type and it's nice to do it first so you know what type you've got. 
And then we're going to add markers. So Google Map .add marker, a new marker option, and we're going to put it at the position for LinkedIn. So I went ahead and like Googled this stuff. So these are correct. And then the icon on the map, we're going to set the, um, we're going to use the built-in bitmap uh, factory. And so we're going to set the default marker. We're going to use a default marker. There's different types of markers. This default marker is going to be like a pin. It's going to look like a pin. We're going to set the hue to green. If you uh, click the dot here, you'll see all the color options. Um, so you could set the hue to uh, blue, cyan, green, magenta, violet, yellow, lots of different options you got going on there. Um, then we're going to put another marker on here. So I'm just adding three markers to the map. The next one's going to be Facebook, and that one's going to be blue, and then the next one's going to be Apple, and that one's going to be violet. Um, so you've got three different markers now. And the snippet is going to show up when you click on the marker. Um, so when you click on the marker on the map, and we'll demonstrate this in a few minutes here, um, it will show up. And then to zoom in on the map, we didn't set the zoom, uh, but we set the default zoom. The default zoom here is set to 10. I'm going to demonstrate 10 to you, and then I'm going to change it to 15 so we can sort of see what happens. And so this is going to set the camera position in the middle of these three markers. And so we can see all three markers on the map. And then it's going to zoom in to a level of 10 so we can sort of see the city names. Um, so the higher you make the number, and you probably just want to go to about 20, I think is probably the max. Uh, but you can Google that and see what the, what the range is. Um, the, the lower you make it, the more zoomed out you are. The higher the number, the more zoomed in you are. Um, so let's take a look at this map, actually. So I am going to run it now that my fan has gone down, which is good. Uh, let's see, I might have to, I still might have to, oh, no, we're installing it. It should run a little bit faster now. Uh, here we go. Uh, so there's my three markers. So I've got a green one, a blue one, and a purple one. And it looks like, and I'm kind of zoomed. I, I set the location for the zoom sort of in the middle here so I can see Mountain View Palo Alto. If I click on the, the green one, I see LinkedIn. And uh, I see some more details that show up over here. I see it moved a little bit, Apple. And then over here, I see Facebook, Facebook headquarters in Menlo Park, which is what this says right here. And it says the title is Facebook and then the snippet underneath it. This one didn't have a snippet. This one didn't have like a, a thing. This one just had a, a name and this one just has a name. So the snippet adds, adds uh, you know, something, something extra to it. You can put like a little message in there. Uh, this guy doesn't have it, not, doesn't have the snippet. And if you want to see what these options are and how to set them, then you just go Google map dot and you'll see add marker, position, title, snippet, icon. You'll see all the options you got. And let's say I want to, zoom in. Um, so I double click and I double click and I double click and I double click and I double click. Can you get the idea? I hope <laughs> double click, double click. Wow. It actually comes down. If you've ever done the Google uh, maps on the, in a web browser, it's the same. That looks like a house actually. That doesn't look like a building. Um, it looks like somebody's house. Well, maybe the coordinates aren't right. Uh, they probably are, but who knows. Um, go on Google and do latitude and longitude and find the coordinate. You can find the coordinates for any location you want. I showed that to you in the last video, actually. Uh, in fact, all you have to do is, uh, let me just do it one more time so you guys are familiar with this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Longitude, if I could spell. And latitude uh, of, oh, here we go, of San Francisco, of uh, CSU East Bay. Mm, CSU East Bay's not in there. Oh, yes, it is. California State University East Bay. So you plug those numbers in. So find, uh, in fact, you could just do it. In fact, there's, well, there's an API that'll actually do it in the app, uh, but I'll let you figure that one out. So you're going to need to find the location for the map. And once you find it, you put it in and then you can set all of the information for it. This is what you're doing in assignment in the mapping assignment. So now I'm going to switch this one at 15. 
just so you can see the difference. So this is the before. Oops, we stopped the before. Well, let's just do the, you saw the before, so let's do the after. I changed it now to 15 instead of 10, and I want to see the zoom. So it's going to launch the activity. And now the zoom is in a little bit closer. So you see I've got a little bit more detail there. I'm clicking on the map and I'm moving it around. Oh, look at that. The Computer History Museum's over there too. And I am kind of sort of in the middle. I can't see my other I can't see my other pins. It's a little bit more difficult. So I like the I like the other one I had before. It's a little bit easier to see the information on the map. You can adjust the zoom, however, and you can also adjust the uh, camera to put it maybe on one of the locations instead of in the middle. Um, so this is just kind of out there, actually sort of around the middle of these locations. So there you have it. Um, I've practically done the assignment for you. The only thing I didn't do is create a theme. Um, if we adjust, and here, just for the sake of demonstration, we'll do one more here. I will do the terrain with the mountains. And let me change the zoom one more time too. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna make the zoom, let's go five, let's go five. So it was 10 originally. So this should be zoomed out even more. So let's see what happens here. So you'll have to adjust the zoom, you'll have to adjust the terrain to see what looks best for what it is you want to do. Oops, well, okay, yeah, five's a little too far out. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit this way, but we can sort of see, oops, I'm moving my scrolling on my mouse and it's, it's uh, now I'm in the water. Okay, hold on a second, uh, bear with me. I'm gonna put it back on 10, because I wanna show you the, uh, the terrain. Uh, so this one here is a uh, map type terrain. So it's going to show us the mountains, the rivers, and stuff like that. And let's see if we've got that in here. The other one was just showing us sort of a, not a street view, but it was kind of, oh, there, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, we got green mountains here. We got the little water here. You can see the bay. It's good, San Lorenzo. Here's Hayward over here. I'm actually on this side of the bay. I'm in Campbell. This is where I am actually right now. Um, so look at my commute. You can see your commute too probably because most people don't live in Hayward, but we'll see. Anyway, so enough rambling. Um, this is kind of fun. Um, I don't know what happened there. My internet is going in and out. Uh, so it's possible I just lost my internet activity. Uh, therefore, if that happens to you, it's probably a bad internet connection. Um, so, in any, way, in any case, this is what you need to do for the assignment. Come up with a theme. Maybe, uh, as I mentioned before, some examples of some themes you could come up with is you could put people that you know in there. You could put your family in there. Uh, you can have it maybe calculate something like um, all of the, I don't know, McDonald's in the Bay Area or something, a gas stations. Uh, Come up with a theme um, and you know you can turn it into a game. Um, you can actually do click events and I'll let you figure that out. Um, like when you click on the item, um, have an event happen and you can add a click event to the marker. Um, so when you click on it, it'll show the name and the address of the person or something. Um, so be creative, um, give yourself a theme, put multiple markers, at least two on the map and uh, play around with the terrain type, play around with the settings uh, for the map and have fun with it. And when you're done playing around with it, turn it in and you'll get a good grade on it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you again for another one. Thanks for watching.